Hello! Today we answer a couple of questions that arose because of these little quads like this. The question is, they've got SPI uh, receiver types in them, can you run them on an LBT radio? Let's find out. But just before we get into it, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell icon which will tell you when I'm uploading stuff. Anyway, back to these. So I found the little SPI receivers great because you didn't have to poke something in there you could just go to CLI and type bind and it binds your radio, which is really good. But these, uh, they're generally listed, and this is the Modular HD, this is the Ishin trash can, both pretty good quads, I like this one a lot. Um, both of them are listed as being non-EU receiver, and that's kind of true because the idea of the LPT firmware is you can run the EU version of D16 or LR12, but that's it. However, you can get D8 mode back uh, without altering the actual firmware on your module, you just have to do a little update on your uh, OpenTX software itself. So now I run everything on international firmware, and that's not because I think it's better or anything, it's just because when I bought my Tyrannus ages ago, one of the very first ones, there, there wasn't a concept of it, it just here is the firmware. And some years in, the EU came out and said you have to have this listen before talk thing. And I already had like a bunch of planes and quads on the wall um, and I didn't want to change some so I was just stuck to it. And so any new radio I get to check out I shove international firmware on it if it's not already there. However, for today I'm going to take this X7 here and I'm going to put the EU version or the LBT version of the um, firmware on both the internal module, the XOT module that sits internally and the EU tick on the OpenTX firmware to get it so I can't bind to something and then I'm going to show how you get it so you get D8 mode back and then we're going to see if we can use D8 mode to on the little SPI receivers. Let's let's get going shall we? Okay so I've got this radio flash with the LBT firmware on the internal module and I've put the European OpenTX firmware on there so I'm going to see if I can bind to this uh, D16 style receiver which I shouldn't be able to do so that is in bind mode. Let's bleep it away. Got nothing going on there. And uh, this is my X9D, which is on the international firmware version. So let's just put that into bind. And you can see we've got the lights flashed there. So we've got solid green which means it's bound okay. And we can just check that very quickly. Yeah, solid green light, okay. So I'm satisfied that's on international firmware, that's on LBT firmware. So we're not ever gonna be able to get the point where we can get that one unless I reflash that, but this should now be good for seeing if we can bind to something uh, with a D8 style receiver. So the problem is on the standard EU receiver or the EU firmware on this if you go in and say I want to bind to D8 you haven't got it, you've got off D16 or LR12 uh, which creates a problem. So first off let's see if we can get the D8 mode in there. Okay for this next section we need to hook up our radio to the computer and this will vary depending on if you're on like a, a QX7 like this one or the 9D or the X-Lite or whatever but uh, I think it's the same with all of them now, which is where you hold in the two trims and power it on. And then you get this screen saying write firmware, restore EEPROM, etc. Or plug in USB cable. Plug the one end into your computer, obviously, and the other end into here. And this will appear as a mass storage device on your computer, so basically a drive will appear. And once you're plugged in, you'll see it say USB connected. And once we've got this, we're ready to move on to using our software, which is called OpenTX Companion. Okay, well, this is OpenTX Companion, and I'll put some links down below to where you can get it. And if you haven't used it before, it's a really handy thing for upgrading your version of OpenTX software and backing up models and even running a simulator of what the radio is like here. Now, once again, don't forget there's a very much a difference between the firmware that's on the module, which is your internal uh, XJT module, and the actual OpenTX firmware itself. So by upgrading the firmware or moving the firmware on OpenTX, we're not touching how the module works. So if that's flashed to LBT, that's not gonna change.
What we're doing in here is we're basically putting an extra option on that isn't on by default. So what you want to do is go to your preferences screen which looks like this here. Now it may be that this drops down and is a, a default. I don't know if it reads this or not but basically you can choose your radio. I'm using X7 here and then it's a case of deciding what you want on there. Now I put this is how I wrote my firmware last time to get the uh, EU mode um, and things you probably might want is the Lua script if you're running those um, these other things may be useful to some people this is if you're using the multi module this is to for example display the stick movements as um, USEX, so 1500 in the middle rather than percentage. There's, there's all sorts of quite useful options here. But the one for LBT that stops it binding or having the D8 option is this one. So if you untick that, uh, that is essentially it. Now, one thing that this shouldn't do is do anything to your model profiles or anything else. But I always say it's good to be safe. And you've got um, options here this will back up the radio to a file this will read the firmware from the radio and you can save that you can also if you want to be super safe you can open the drive uh, that you should have uh, that should have appeared when you connected the radio and you can back all this up although this is mainly the stuff that comes by default all the the model memory and stuff is actually held in the radio itself anyway I'm I'm pretty confident about I've got all my stuff backed up so I'm gonna go ahead and download the firmware. So what we do here, we go to download, it will prompt you to say do you want it? Um, and basically we can just say download firmware. And this will save it as whatever you like to call it. And it will ask do you want to write the firmware to radio now? And we can say yes. Write to TX. Pretty quick. It says flashing's done. Weirdly you have to sort of say OK and then close. And that should be it. So let's check the radio out and see what we've got. Now, one thing to check there is that none of my models were affected, as I said, but it really can't hurt to back these things up just in case. So if we go over and see what we can find now. So our modes, LR12, D8, D16, that's good news. OK, so let's now see if we can bind up to one of these little SPI receivers using this new D8 mode we've got. So as my test subject, I'm going to use this little Ishin trash can I looked at uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is a nice little model. And kind of the sort of thing we're talking about in the questions I had. So in here is an SPI-based receiver, so it's all built into the single board. Great news is you don't have to try and poke something in it to say bind. You can do it through the CLI. Um, but there's a couple of slight different setups to do because we're going to try and use the D8 mode instead of the D16 mode And I'll show you what to do now. Okay, so here we are on OpenTX. I've got my radio with me I've got my trash can hooked up. So let's connect in there uh, and what we'll see in this sort of SPI receiver is obviously we don't have a serial RX here if we go into the configuration we see that it is set for S uh, SPI RX support and this is showing FreeSky X. Now what we've got here is FreeSky X is basically the D16 version and this is where the difference between non-EU and EU come in. So on this particular type of quad if you try to do FreeSky X you'd need the international firmware but if you try FreeSky D this is equivalent to a D8 receiver so it doesn't matter if you're running the LBT firmware or the international firmware you should be able to bind to it. That's what we hope anyway let's find out. So let's save that and let's go into the CLI. Now over on the radio I'm gonna select the bind so you hear it making this little chirpy noise and over here in the CLI I'm just going to type bind and that should be it. So I'm going to save that. Telemetry lost. That's a good sign when it says it's lost the telemetry. telemetry hey that sounds good doesn't it? So if I now connect to this and go into my receiver tab and yep aside from the fact that the channel map's wrong this is all looking good. I can use my receiver. So let me just set this up quickly and we'll just make sure I can do a quick hover on it. So there you go. 
good news, you can fly LBT on these little SBI receivers. Now, one downside of these little SBI receivers I notice is that they transmit RSSI on AUX5, which is channel nine. And if you're using D8, it only goes up to eight channels. So you miss that RSSI information that you could put on your OSD. Of course, you've got telemetry as well, so you'd get the low telemetry warnings on your radio. And generally speaking, these things, 100, 200 meters maybe on a clear day is what you get. They don't go that well behind you. These are close in receivers. If you were wanting to go further afield, that's when you'd need a decent receiver like an XM Plus. At that point, you can flash an XM Plus for international or LBT anyway, so you haven't got a problem. But pretty much, you should be able to run pretty much anything, irrespective of your radio firmware now. So that's, I think, good news at least. Of course, from a legal standpoint, I'm not gonna make any advice there. Read up on it, if you will. It was taken away because of some EU thing. Um, I don't care, <laughs> but if you wanna check it out further, be my guest. I'm not gonna go into it here. But yeah, you can do it, and I think that's dead handy because these little things are great and not having to poke in there or put... See, even a receiver like a little XM Plus, you haven't got space in there, so it's really handy to use these inbuilt ones, even if they don't give you that much range, but, you know, convenience factor. Anyway, I hope that was helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.